Welcome to One Quick Question with InfoMedia, your source for answers to your questions about websites, digital marketing, and more. I'm your host, Carrie Rollwagon. Today's episode is a recording of our live One Quick Question event. I've loved getting to meet so many of you at our live events this season, and I really can't wait until next year when our events start up again. And on today's episode, we're welcoming Jana Stevens, our head of project strategy here at InfoMedia. Jana is speaking on how to amp up your website with quick and easy wins. Now, in person, you could see Jana like in all her skating gear. And if you want to see that and you're listening to this now, you can go to infomedia.com or you can go to find us on social and you can find photos of that. Um, but you'll get the information uh, even if you're just hearing the audio recording. It is important you can work on your strategy for your website, whether you're planning your website or it's already live. And it's amazing to see how much stepping back and just taking a different look at your strategy can save you time, money, and frustration. Even just taking an hour can seriously save you so much. And Janet is going to share exactly how to do that today. So here's our live recording of One Quick Question with InfoMedia. As I roll up to the mic, I'm not going to do any tricks. Michael Green said he heard I was going to grind this bookshelf. That's not happening, so (laughs) you'll have to go to the skate park to see that. Uh, But good morning. So the first thing I want to say is that websites are important. Y'all know this. They are the online storefront to your business. And you want to make sure that you're representing your business and yourself well. Um, You want to make sure that you're representing in a way that's professional, that's engaging, and that's helpful to the people coming to your site. So have you ever taken a look at your website and thought, this thing is so bland, I wish it was a little more exciting. So I'm here to tell you that your website can make an impact without a complete overhaul. Websites aren't the place to get so creative that users are puzzled about their next steps. So we'll talk a little bit about that. The real challenge is finding the right balance between engagement and clarity for your users. Sorry for the jingle. Uh, Maybe you've tried a website revamp before, maybe it left you frustrated. I understand this topic is something that can be a little bit touchy for some people, so I've decided to sprinkle in a little bit of fun. So as Carrie mentioned, I am head of project strategy here at InfoMedia, um, but outside of work, I'm known as Janarchy. Um, because one of my favorite hobbies is roller derby. So you might be wondering, what the heck does roller derby have to do with websites? There is a method to my madness, my friends. Uh, Some of the most crucial components to playing roller derby successfully are strategy, tactics, and avoiding penalties. And the same principles can be applied to your website as well. I don't go into any game without a strategy. Just like the best websites have to start with clear goals. And like a skilled derby player avoids penalties, you will need to navigate your website plan skillfully so that you avoid any potential pitfalls. And like in roller derby, if you do apply a strategy and avoid those missteps and penalties, your website can absolutely make an impact. So view your website hits uh, as kind of like I view hits in roller derby. People are coming to your site, they are engaging with it. Um, Actually, hitting your client base probably isn't a good idea, Um, but if you're interested in that, I can shoulder check you uh, after this. (laughs) So I recently completely overhauled my Derby team's website. This site was created back in 2015 when the league was first started, so this old version definitely looked dated by the time I came to the team and started to uh, look at it. When my teammates found out that I work in websites, they uh, really kind of pushed me to give us something new. Um, So this look was not reflective of our growth over the last eight years. So I used the tips that I'm gonna be sharing today to go from this to what we currently have. And if y'all are interested, it's druidcityderby.com. You can scroll through. Um, There's a lot more to it than just this. So, first thing I want to talk about is make a plan to avoid a direction penalty. So, in roller derby, we skate counterclockwise around the track. And if a skater travels in the wrong direction and attempts to hit or block an opposing player, we get a penalty. I have gotten a lot of those. Uh, You want to avoid moving in the wrong direction with your website as well. So, the best start or the best way to do this is by starting with a plan. First of all, you want to start with very clear objectives. So think about the primary goals that you are wanting to achieve with your website. 
Is it to get people to pick up the phone and call you? Is it to drive your site visitors to uh, maybe fill out a certain form to request a quote? Or maybe it's to have people apply for a job. A clear goal is gonna help guide the structure and the content for your website. So after establishing your goals, then you want to start to plan out your site architecture. So if you've worked with me in any capacity through projects, you'll hear me talk about site maps and how those are very important. So people sometimes think that they need to lay out every single page of their website in their navigation menu. That is not a great idea. Uh, that would be very lengthy. So you want to know your audience and you want to know their needs. So tailor that site map to ensure easy access to the information you know that your visitors are coming to your site to look for. If you are curious to know what pages that your visitors are viewing, if you have Google Analytics or GA4, you can take a look at that and get a little bit of a better idea about what your goal should be. Another piece of advice about site mapping is that you don't want to overcomplicate it. You want to stick to something that is straightforward and that's intuitive for your users to navigate. You also want to aim for a shallow sitemap structure, so the important pages need to be accessible within a few clicks of your home page. This is going to reduce your user frustration because if they can't find what they're looking for on their site, guess what they're going to do? They leave. After you have created that sitemap, you also want to make sure that you have the right content to support it. It is important to think about content before ever starting to design or to dabble in working and changing things around in your website. It may seem like kind of a boring thing to do. Um, it can be a little bit frustrating. It's a little bit time consuming to get all your content together. Um, but having a content plan assures that if you are working with a designer, that design elements they create are going to align with your content. You want to make sure that we're designing around what you actually have and not what you are hoping to have one day because time is uh, a, a enemy to us all and a lot of times we lose a lot of time doing other things especially if websites are not your primary focus from day to day content is also going to inform design decisions that's going to help create a very user-centric design and it's gonna to help to cater to your target audience's needs. And having content ready to roll establishes a smooth workflow. So if you are working with a designer and a developer, if you have that content ready, it's gonna hopefully speed up your timeline, expedite the process, and really give them what they need to be able to help you. Content is also essential for setting yourself up for search engine optimization and ensuring your website is search engine friendly right from the start. So next, we want to use photos for impact, but we also want to avoid misconduct penalties. So in Derby, we receive misconduct penalties if we violate specific rules or we engage in uh, hurtful or harmful uh, or unsportsmanlike actions, um, maybe like deceiving or ignoring officials. Um, yes, I've gotten an insubordination penalty before, but it's because I did not hear the official give me the first penalty. Uh, so today, pretend like I'm an official and don't ignore what I'm about to say. You cannot use just any old photo on your website. Let me break it down. So use high quality images first and foremost. So we've all been there. Maybe we need a picture replaced on the website and you think, well, I've got a cell phone. I'll just snap some photos and I'll throw them on the site. So sometimes this actually works if you've got a good phone and you've got an eye for photography. But more frequently, when we are sent photos taken on a cell phone, we find that they're just maybe not the right fit for a website. There may be a photo someone really wants to use on their homepage hero section, so that section at the very top of your homepage. But maybe they send a photo that is vertically oriented. Well, guess what? That is not going to fit well in a horizontal space. So make sure that you are using the right size photos, the right orientation photos for the right spots. This next thing is probably going to be the biggest snafu to earn you a misconduct penalty. You cannot do a Google image search and pull photos from Google to use on your website. You actually can, but there are probably going to be consequences if you're caught. So most images that you find on Google are protected by copyright laws. So if you use a protected image, you might get in trouble for copyright infringement. Also using random images that you pull from Google 
really makes your site look a little bit disjointed. So if you have a brand guide or if you have photography goals in mind, a lot of times the photos that you might find on Google just are not gonna fit your particular brand. And finally, if you're in an industry or business that's very visible and you're caught using copyrighted photos without permission, this can really reflect poorly on your credibility. So some guidelines for using photos effectively. Know your space. Vertically oriented photos do not work in horizontal spaces and vice versa. And sometimes it does take a little work to find the right photo for certain spaces. That is the nature of websites. And I have used maybe five different photos before finding the right one for a particular space on my own site. So if you are not having luck getting just the perfect photo to fit, don't worry. It just may require something a little bit different. So I want to show you a couple of examples of photos that I was sent by uh, the president of my league at the time. And these are the ones she wanted me to use in the hero section of the new website. Um, that's a terrible photo. It's, I think it was taken maybe in 2015 when the league started. It's also very grainy. It's not high resolution at all. And even though it is horizontally oriented, it's just not the best first impression that I wanted to make with the site. Matt Robinson knows this person on the screen. Um, this is another photo that was sent to me as an option to use here. First of all, why would I want somebody looking like that? Very confused. I think she would probably get mad at me if I had used this uh, on the site. It's also grainy, not high resolution. So I ended up going with the one that you saw previously. Next is copy. So before you start writing any text, any messaging for your website, you want to take some time to really get clear on your tone, your brand voice, and really just that voice that you want to convey. This is something that our copy team at InfoMedia asks before we ever start to write copy for any of our clients. What is your brand's personality? So if you maybe want to play or portray a strictly professional tone, you're going to write really differently than if you were to portray kind of a a cheeky sort of tone, and they're very, very different. Your tone is going to help set the stage for how your audience perceives your business. And it's also going to help establish trust and create a connection with your visitors because everything on your site is going to seem cohesive. Next is avoid huge walls of text. You can break those up with certain design elements. What you don't want is for your website to turn into Wikipedia. So don't get me wrong, I've been known to head down Wikipedia rabbit trails at like 2 a.m. because the content itself is interesting to me, but it's not that exciting to read. Um, it's informative, of course, and it's important to be informative on your website. Walls of text, though, can quickly turn off site visitors. They can also really read a little bit dry and impersonal. Um, so it's really important to use your unique voice, your unique perspective in creating copy and messaging for your website. I was recently speaking with a client about this very thing because they're in a medical industry. It's especially easy for medical type websites to try and define every ailment or every issue that their patients could potentially be experiencing. Uh, there's WebMD for that and you really don't want people to come to your site and diagnose themselves. Um, so try to avoid those huge walls of text. Remember that I mentioned there was a misconduct penalty for stealing images from Google. Same thing can apply to AI-generated content. I've had a lot of clients recently talking to me about ChatGPT, and I admit that AI can actually be a very helpful tool in creating outlines. Um, it is not a substitute for a human. It's especially important to remember that because AI is hot right now, a lot of companies besides yours are gonna be using it to also potentially generate messaging for their websites. But if you are using AI to write that text, and so is your competition, how is your website going to be different than the people you're trying to uh, compete against? It's also important to remember that AI is not infallible. So it can and it does make errors. Um, it could generate factually incorrect content. It could insert human biases into certain things that it creates because it learns from us. So while you can use AI as a helper, have it reviewed by uh, maybe a couple of people for accuracy, for context, and for coherence with the rest of your site. Um, I've seen a lot of AI-generated content, and 
it reads like those Wikipedia walls of text. And I think that your website and your business deserve more. So get familiar with that brand tone. Use AI as an assistant, but not as the end all be all. You could absolutely receive a misconduct penalty for copying and pasting text from another website directly onto your site. I know that may seem silly, like we were all taught in college and high school that plagiarizing is wrong, but that still can happen, especially if you have a business and you have certain manufacturers that you work with. A lot of times the manufacturer websites will have product descriptions or things that you might think, let's just copy and paste those over to my site. Um, try to change that text around just a little bit. So just like stealing images from Google, if your site is found to have text um, taken from somewhere else, it can really hurt your credibility as a business. And maybe you think no one will notice, and that might be true. Humans may not notice it, but you can't hide from robots, and that duplicate content can negatively affect your search engine optimization efforts. So always remember that your website's messaging is not just information, it's part of your brand's digital identity. So invest the time and effort to create content that reflects you and not a watered down version of your business or someone else's. So next up is to freshen your content to stay on top of your game. So this is something that we tell our clients all the time at InfoMedia. You are never truly done with your website. Think of a site launch as a ribbon cutting instead of a finish line, because when your website is live and it's in the world, it still needs to be maintained. So you want to plan to keep your site updated regularly. This isn't something that necessarily merits a penalty, but it does go back to your strategy. Your site visitors and search engines like to see that your website is being updated on a regular basis. My team, when I skate, we don't use the same plays back to back in a game because that would make us really predictable and much less effective on the track. So in that same way, your website occasionally needs new elements to keep your visitors engaged um, and just to make the website as a whole a little bit more impactful. So if you've built your site map or your site architecture to grow with you, uh, you'll set yourself up very well to be able to add new pages as you need them, update your messaging, or switch out your photos with relative ease. And if you have a blog, keep it updated, uh, or at least see if you can remove the date option if you do not plan to keep it updated on the regular. I wanna to touch on something that I frequently hear, and that is, what if I just link my Twitter or my Facebook or my Instagram feeds to my website? And then those website updates, or those updates to the social media platforms will show on my site, It'll look like we're current even if we're not. Um, Y'all are not fooling anyone if you do this. So picture an Instagram feed on your site as like a little sideline chat. Uh, it provides snippets of information, but it's not telling your business's whole story. Social media can absolutely uh, supplement your site's content strategy, but don't rely on it. So in fact, I often discourage our clients to embed or to hook their social feeds directly into their websites. So entities like Meta and X, they are known to frequently change their APIs. That can lead to broken feeds on your website that you may not catch right away, that we may not catch right away. Your site visitors might catch those. And it's just not a good look. So use social media with caution. So don't be your own worst critic. This is one of the most important things that I try to drive home. So have you given yourself a hard time because you don't think your website is exciting enough? I know probably some people have because I've done it. And that's fair, but I want to remind you that we, as we're maintaining our websites, are the users who are looking at our websites the most often. So I will use my work on my team's website as an example. I was looking at all those images, all of that copy that I was writing, all of those site pages until my eyes glazed over and I started second guessing every single decision that I was making. So your website's harshest critic is probably you. Think about it, if we are spending countless hours scrutinizing every single aspect of our website, we're exposing ourselves to our own work over and over again, we're becoming more sensitive to any details, anything that we might consider an imperfection, constant interaction with your own website will amplify your own perception of its shortcomings. So that might lead you to focus on very minor things 
that are probably not going to be noticed by someone viewing your site less frequently. In roller derby, if we need an unbiased second look at a penalty we believe was unfair, uh, our coach or our team captain will call what's called an official review. We present our case to the head referee, the head referee confers with the rest of the refs, and they decide whether a rule was misinterpreted or a penalty was wrongly applied. So when I felt like I couldn't look at my team's website anymore because I just had that you know, information overload, I called my own official review in the form of my sister. Um, my sister is, uh, if you've met her, very honest to the point where it can make people cry. So I knew she would probably be a good person to take a look and give me her honest feedback. So she looked at the site, she navigated around it as a first time user, and she did give her unbiased opinion. So you can call an official review for your own website too. Seek feedback from others, get fresh insight, and of course you can use a company like Infomedia to also give you an official review if you want. We know websites, but we also know what to look for, and we can look at things with fresh eyes. So as we come to the end of our bout, uh, we've covered a lot and I will recap these key takeaways for you. Begin with a plan, work smart, plan your website's direction with intention, freshen your photos and text without stealing either <laughs> from other places and make sure that the content that you're using is high quality. Keep your website dynamic by reflecting your growth and change, constantly allowing for updates and remember that perspective matters. Don't be your harshest critic, seek outside feedback, and gain new perspectives and insights that way. So when I receive a penalty in roller derby, and I have received quite a few, I get off the track, I don't question the refs. There are seven of them watching gameplay and they see a lot more than I do. So I was very angry in many situations in the penalty box, especially during my last game. Um, but I also know that at the end of the day, those penalties are an opportunity for me to learn, for me to grow, and to really kind of amp up my game. So I am hoping that you have learned these penalties today. Um, you may have received some and that's okay because they're a chance for you to grow. Um, I hope that you feel empowered to amp up your own website with these quick wins. And I'm excited to hear about the impact that y'all will make. Um, so knock out the competition. Thank you. One Quick Question is brought to you by Infomedia. Infomedia is a web service company, and that means we do whatever you need done for your website, whether that's shooting video, writing copy, incorporating digital marketing, or even redesigning your whole site. To meet with us, you can email quickquestion at infomedia.com, and we'll set you up with the right people to talk to. One Quick Question is developed and hosted by me, Carrie Rollwagon. Find show notes, including links to what we talk about on the podcast today, and links to free tickets of One Quick Question Live at infomedia.com slash quickquestion. Our producer is Elena Harmond. Our theme music is by Brad Davis. And our sound engineering is done by our in-house media team, including Paul Bryant, who's in the studio with me today. So if you need website support, marketing advice, or you're interested in building a new website, Give us a call at 205-823-4440 or send us an email. And I'll leave you with this thought. A real expert helps to clarify, not confuse. So don't take website advice from someone who can't give you a straight answer. <laughs>